Good morning. So I figured today a change of pace and I'd had this Yates book sitting around three poems. Start with one of these. There's lots of uh, lots of millenarial gloominess, so we're not ending with this, we're simply starting with it. The second coming, turning and turning in the widening gyre, the falcon cannot hear the falconer, things fall apart, the center cannot hold, mere anarchy is loosed upon the world, the blood-dimmed tide is loosed, and everywhere the ceremony of innocence is drowned. The best lack all conviction, while the worst are full of passionate intensity. Surely some revelation is at hand, surely the second coming is at hand. The second coming. Hardly are those words out when a vast image out of Spiritus Mundi troubles my sight. Somewhere in the sands of the desert, a shape with lion body and the head of a man, a gaze as blank and pitiless as the sun, is moving its slow thighs, while all about it real shadows of the indigent desert birds. The darkness drops again. But now I know that twenty centuries of stony sleep were vexed to nightmare by a rocking cradle, and what rough beast its hour come round at last slouches towards Bethlehem to be born. That was written in 1920. Feelings come up at great times of transition. I accidentally said as once too often, so you know, for extra credit, people can comment and complain about exactly what I got wrong. Um, and the middle one, although I'm more interested in this middle one, I'm going to end on the end one when the middle one. He also came out with a uh, I, I noticed looking through the title index, he has a poem called called Lapis Lazuli, and I have sitting here, by coincidence, uh, my two favorite pocket fidget stones on my folding table, uh, Lapis and uh, Sodalite. So the light comes over the balcony. Can I get it to catch the light? There! And that works. And then maybe, because the uh, the sodalite is interesting, to s excuse me, the uh, lapis is also in really beautiful in the light. There we go. We can't really catch the color. The camera is not catching the depth of that blue. Not nearly, because it's slightly translucent, and so you get light coming into the stone, and it gives it a real rich blue. Eves Klein loved that blue. Ultramarine. All right, then we have the tower. No, we don't. Here it is. Mark the end of the poem. Sail. Oh, for the love of God. I didn't wake up early enough. We've got drills. But that'll work. It's okay. Everybody needs to get stuff done. Sailing to Byzantium. That is no country for old men. The young in one another's arms, birds in the trees, those dying generations at their song. The salmon falls, the mackerel crowded seas, fish, flesh, or fowl, 
commend all summer long whatever is begotten, born, and dies, caught in that sensual music all neglect monuments of unaging intellect. An aged man is but a paltry thing, a tattered coat upon a stick, unless soul clap its hands and sing and louder sing for every tatter in its moral dress. Nor there, nor is there singing school, but studying monuments of its own magnificence, and therefore I have sailed the seas and come to the holy city of Byzantium. O sages, standing in God's holy fire, as in the gold mosaic of a wall, come from the holy fire, pairn in a gyre, and be the singing masters of my soul. Consume my heart away, sick with desire, and fastened to a dying animal, it knows not what it is and gather me into the artifice of eternity. Once out of nature, I shall never take my bodily form from any natural thing, but such a form as Grecian goldsmiths make of hammered gold and gold enameling to keep a drowsy emperor awake or set upon a golden bough to sing to lords and ladies of Byzantium, of what is past, or passing, or to come. It's not quite hammered gold, but it would keep anybody awake, even an emperor. It's constant, really. There isn't a day that goes by. It's not necessary. Number three. The Lake Isle of Innistree. I will arise and go now, and go to Innistree, and a small cabin built there of clay and wattles made. Nine bean rows will I have there a hive for the honey bee and live alone in the bee loud glade. And I shall have some peace there. For peace comes dropping slow, dropping from the veils of the morning to where the cricket sings. There midnight's all a glimmer and noon a purple glow and evening full of the linnet's wings. I will arise and go now, for always night and day I hear lake water lapping with low sounds by the shore while I stand on the roadway or on the pavement's gray I hear it in the deep heart's core. That was early, 1890. Uh, William Butler Yeats was a very young man when he wrote that. He didn't go to Innisfree. He was imagining a future, being a happy old man. He saw a poster, a tourist poster, for some type of a package deal or cottage in Innisfree. Oh man. Breathing motor oil. You know, you know, they ba the the city, the city of South Pasadena did something wonderful. They don't, they, they don't allow those on city property. You gotta use electric. It's much better. God, it's an artifact of the 20th century. Those gasoline lawn implements. The late 20th century. Can you imagine what life was like when those didn't exist? That's going to happen again, soon enough. <laughs> <laughs>